I want to come back to this because I know it's confusing. You had a look at enlargement factors um, yesterday. And so I want to address a, why is Mr. Kurt emailing me? Um, I want to address a point that I know is, is quite easy to get wrong. I want us to understand, like when you enlarge something, what results if you have like weird numbers for your enlargement factor, okay? So you've all seen a diagram like this. In fact, I hope some of you have made a diagram just like this, okay? If I say here's an original shape, the red one, and I want an enlargement factor of two, okay? The important thing is these guys here, these things in green and orange. Do you notice these, yeah. right? Do you remember measuring these out? This is what makes the enlargement actually function, that this length and this length are in a ratio one to two. Okay, so from the original shape to your new shape, when you compare each of the features, the enlargement factor two means that you're two times further away from your center of enlargement, or that's what they call it. Okay, so if you come back to that as the definition, right, it's all about the ratios of distances, then you'll understand what it means if you get given an enlargement factor that's less than one. You're small. Okay, now this is confusing because it's called an enlargement factor. Okay, but if you come back to the definition, so for example, remember I said here's my red one, which is my original shape. Okay, by the way, we call these the original and the image. I take this distance, I take this distance from each of the features one, two, three, four to the center of enlargement. And for the new version, the new shape, I want the ratio to be one to a half, right? So that's what makes it closer in. Okay? By being closer to my center of enlargement, you are necessarily smaller. And that's why you get a new shape that's half the size of the original. So don't be deceived. This idea of like enlarging, well, depending on the number you put in, it doesn't make it larger at all. Okay? So come back to the definition of what something is if you get confused about it. This shape is smaller than the one you had before. Okay? So um, I want you to uh, make sure you've got that idea clear and then needed this space. If you want that back, I'll put it up again in a minute. It's okay, we'll have time. The heading I'd now like you to make is finding sides Sorry, of similar figures. That's what you were just dividing with the 0.5. Yep. Last lesson we did it as like it was 1 and we lost. Yeah, sure, okay. So if you want to think about, for example, well, actually I'll, I'll just bring it back for a second. Um, if you want to come no, back to this. Yeah. No, I can't. Okay. Yeah, 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 sure. I can answer that question for you. So, I guess if I subtly change the wording, right? If I said to you, here's a shape, I would like you to enlarge it by a factor of 0 0.5, right? So that means it's like, well, you must get bigger, right? You must get bigger. That's what the word says, okay? But here, like, what we're talking about is, like, it's almost as if that word there, enlargement, it's not actually there. It's really just a factor that you're changing this by. And it's about these lengths. The lengths here are the important things between corresponding points, okay? So for that reason, what you're getting, it has to be smaller, right? It has to be smaller because really it's more about the fact that it's a factor. I'm comparing these ratios rather than I'm telling you explicitly I want to make this thing bigger, okay? Um... I suppose another thing is the difference between of and by. Conjunctions, they're nasty things. They're tiny, but they can change a lot of meaning, right? So if I make something bigger by 50%, or I, can I say, like, what's 50% of something? Those are completely different, aren't they? Right? Does that make sense? Like, it's the difference between 100 to 150 or 100 to 50. So that's how I would argue it. Does that make sense? Sandy, did you want to clarify something? Um, yeah, so you know how like I was doing a question last night and it was like find this like like the scale factor, you know, like mm -hmm. k equals to mm -hmm. yeah. Um and they gave us like basically those two shape shapes. Yeah. Um, and they gave you like lengths, right? Like as in they tell you this, 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 and then that's how you calculate the number. Yeah, is that the question you're thinking of? Yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm just like, how do you know which one's like the original one, which they like enlarged it by? Or, like. Yeah, sure. That's a good question. Um, the answer is in the context of those questions, you don't. You don't. Uh, and that's, that's okay, because if you think about it, a ratio of 2 to 1 and a ratio of 1 to 2, if you've got these shapes and they're not in any order in particular, like they're just there on the page, yeah? Then these are actually the same ratio, yeah? It's like, well, one is twice as the size of the other one, and I don't have any labels on either that says that's the first one and that's the second one. So if, you're not, if you don't give me an order, then I can't give you something which has order in it, right? Whereas, of course, if there's something... Which is like, so later on when we look into um, 
further about halfway through, we're going to talk about scale diagrams. So it's like, okay, there's a, a house plan, right? And then there's the house. So clearly, the house is the original thing, and the plan is what you've written, drawn to like reflect that, right? So therefore, that will answer the question of order for you. Right? But if they don't tell you order, then you don't have to worry about it. All right. So um, I think I was halfway through actually giving you the title here. The title was Finding Sides of Similar Figures. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a straight line. It's a straight line. Okay, so here's what I'm going to um, say to you, right? Similar figures. Did Ms. Nordy tell you about a definition for what similar figures are by any chance? <laughs> yes? No? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good, good, good. So I want to give you a slightly more technical definition of a similar figure, right? A similar figure is a shape that preserves two things, two things, okay? Um, the characteristics and the proportions of one shape to another, but alters the size. So let me write that for you. It's a shape that preserves the characteristics and also the proportions while altering size. Okay? Now, you can see, this is like what you said before, but it was in more colloquial language before. It's like, it looks, it looks the same. What we mean by it looks the same is, if it's got four sides before, it's gonna have four sides again, right? Or if it had five or 15 or whatever. And if there was one side and it was twice as long as another one, then it's still gonna be twice as long in the new shape, okay? All you're doing is making it bigger or smaller, okay? Now, here's the important thing. If you, therefore, know that these are going to be preserved from one shape to another, then if you know something about the original shape, you can take everything you know, all those relationships and characteristics there, and you can apply them to your new shape. Okay? So here's an example of what I mean. Would you, um, if you have a rule there, draw this for me. Ah, so you're thinking of transformations. Kinda, but not. Uh, those are talking about congruent figures rather than similar ones, which means not just the characteristics and proportions, but the size is the same too. So I want you to draw for me two trapeziums and do your best to make them similar. Okay, so you got some um, you got some measurements on there. Now here's the idea, right? If you know that these shapes are similar, if you know they've got all the same characteristics and proportions, then if you know all of these things, you can find out all of these things, right? Now you look before at finding this K, this enlargement factor thing, right? So what you need to do is compare two lengths that correspond, okay? These are really important. In fact, I'm going to label them as such. Corresponding lengths. Yes, you can see why we had to do MM1 and MM2 before this, right? And so if you connect these two together, you can see they're in the ratio... 8 to 16, which is 1 to 2, right? Both of them are fine, but I might as well state it as simply as I can, okay? So therefore, if going in this direction, now coming back to Sandy's question, now I do have a direction, now I'm saying this is the first one, that's the second one, I can do the same thing for all the other sides. So going from here to this side, which corresponds, they're the ones that sit on top of each other, this should be one to two as well, right? So what's that going to be, this new side? In between two, right? 
When I go to this uh, right hand side, I'm going to use the same ratio, make sure I correspond to the same length. And again, I'm going to double it, right? So what's going to happen? 30, good. And last one in down here, 23, this is going to be? Okay, wonderful.